Congratulations, you've made it to the finish line and covered a ton of ground. In this course, we've learned about focus, semantics, aria and styling, and how they all fit into the WCAG and WebAIM checklists. These are all really important tools in our accessibility tool belt, but it can be easy to get caught up in the low-level implementation details and forget that accessibility is really all about making sure all of your users can access your content. Throughout the course, we met some users with various forms of impairments, including Laura, a program manager on Chrome who has low vision, Ada, a software engineer with motor impairment, Diotsna, who is blind and manages a team of test engineers, Sam, a recruiter at Google who's also deaf, and of course our good friend Victor, who is a blind technical program manager working across several product areas. It's important to remember that no matter what your product is, there's a whole range of users out there, not just the narrow spectrum that we might be designing for. Building only for that subset of users is excluding not only anyone with a permanent disability or impairment, but also means our product may fail any user when they're in a context which impacts the way that they use technology, such as trying to use a phone one-handed while wrangling a screaming toddler. So having empathy is a huge part of creating an accessible product. Another really important aspect is to make it part of the process from the beginning and make it part of everyone's job. And by that, we mean everyone. Developers obviously have a really important role to play in making sure that we implement interfaces in a way which maximizes accessibility and takes advantage of the HTML platform. But designers also have a responsibility to ensure that accessibility is considered from the beginning, both in terms of ensuring that the visual design is accessible, as Rob laid out in this lesson, but also considering keyboard usability and semantics and labeling. And project or product managers have a responsibility to ensure that accessibility is a blocking criterion for launch and to make sure that it's scheduled appropriately. However, all of that is a best case scenario. We know the real world is messier than that. So what can we do to try and make things better right away? Remediating accessibility, like any time you're trying to reduce the number of bugs in your software, is best looked at through the lens of impact. How can you have the most impact on users with the least amount of effort? And this boils down to three main things. First, how frequently is this piece of UI used? Is it a critical part of the application, like the sign-in form, or something that might be a handy feature, but less commonly used? Second, how badly does this accessibility issue affect our users? For example, is it something which is just going to stop screen reader users in their tracks? Or is it something which maybe is annoying, but can be worked around? And finally, how expensive is it going to be to fix this issue? Could we fix three other critical accessibility bugs in the time it takes to fix this one? In the end, the only true measure of accessibility is whether users can use our products. Well-designed and built products are going to work for a very broad range of users in a very broad range of situations. So ultimately, good accessibility equals good UX, and making it part of your process is going to benefit everyone.